Today we're going to talk about Power BI embedding options. Hi, I'm Adam Saxton and welcome to Guy in a Cube, a channel dedicated to helping you and your business gain insights by learning and growing on the Microsoft Business Intelligence stack. And today I want to talk about three ways that you can embed items from Power BI into your assets, such as websites, blogs, or your own application. The first way you can do this is with Publish to Web. Publish to Web is a way that you can embed a full report into anything, really. A blog, a website. What you do is you go to a report, and inside of that report, you can go to File and Publish to Web. That will give you an embed code, at which point you can take that embed code, which is really just an iframe, and plug that into anything, whether it be the blog, the website, or an application. It could even be your SharePoint site. A couple things to note about Publish to Web. First is that there is no real authentication. So if you put this on a website and you stick that out on the internet, anyone can get to it. So be sure to be careful about what data that you stick in that report that you're exposing to your audience. There's a couple of limitations with Publish to Web. First off, you can't use it with any type of live connection or direct query connection. So if you are using Analysis Services Live Connections with this, you are not going to be able to use Publish to Web with that. And it kind of makes sense because there's no authentication and it's not going to be able to pass that down anyway. Another limitation is that you can't use it with row-level security outright. So if you've enabled an imported data set or a direct query data set with row-level security within inside of Power BI, you can't use Publish to Web there either. So when you go there and you don't see the Publish to Web option, it may be because of one of those limitations. Be sure to check out the documentation. I've got that link down below so that you can figure out what all of those limitations are. The other thing you can do with Publish to Web is you can manage the codes that you create with that. So if you create an embed code and you give that to someone or you use it in a site, you can revoke that code so that it can't be used any longer if you need to. Okay, the second way you can embed items from Power BI is to use the actual REST APIs that are available from a developer perspective. So those APIs you can actually use to create and embed items into iframes or with inside of your actual application. So if you're a coder and you want to write an application, you can absolutely do this. We've got samples that are available. Those samples are out on GitHub, so you can actually see how this works. A couple things you will have to realize when using this option is that users will have to log in with their organization account. So this is not like published to web where it's just out there and people can hit it without authenticating. They have to sign in and they'll have access to the reports and or tiles that their account has access to. Another thing to realize with this is you actually have to register the application with your Azure Active Directory tenant. And we've created a great and easy way for you to do that. All you have to do is go to dev.powerbi.com slash apps and you can actually fill those things in and it will register it for you. You do have to be a global admin of your tenant to register that application. So a regular user can't do it because they don't have rights to add your Active Directory at that point. So the thing with this is that it does require an actual Power BI tenant. You have to have an actual login that you can sign into Power BI with, very similar to Publish to Web. All right, the third item that you can use is the new Power BI embedding. We just announced at WPC that this is now generally available. And what this is is an Azure subscription that you can use to create workspaces. You can create a workspace collection and then multiple workspaces in that collection. And then within that collection, you can upload a Power BI desktop file or you can use direct query to connect to services such as Azure SQL Database or Azure Data Warehouse and use live streaming of that data into your items. So this option is great for ISVs that are developing custom applications or, or using it with third-party applications that they resell. But you can also use these items even in a blog site if you want a blog post or a website. Patrick LeBlanc's got a great blog post where he talks and uses about Power BI Embedded and you can see that down in the description below as well. There are also samples available out on GitHub that you can use to get up and running and use the sample application to actually create those workspaces and publish your Power BI desktop file to Azure. The thing that caught me a little bit is in the Azure portal, I couldn't actually create the workspaces outright. So you can use that application to actually create the workspace and manage 
those items that are in it. Let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and I will get back to you with the information that I have. And I will also have links to all the documentation down below for more resources. And if you liked the video or this was your first time, be sure to subscribe for more great content. Hey guys, be sure to head over to the Guy in a Cube channel to check out the behind the scenes video of how this video was made.